Hey, what's happening guys? Welcome back to another video, and this is going to be my quick update video on the Anet E10 3D printer. So, as you all know, it has a lot of quality problems in terms of the structure itself, but here I'm going to show you some test prints from the E10, as well as the Sierra 10, and compare some of the prints, and see where it stands right now with me. So, let's get right into it. Now, I do want to mention that the blue filament that I have, it seems like I might have a bad spool. I found that out later, before recording the video. Yeah, just keep that in mind. So, anyways, start with what I printed first. Uh, I printed this thing was supposed to be a pyramid, except I felt like it was going to be 100% info. I should have left it for maybe 30 minutes more and see where it's going to stand, but... I stopped it there, and uh, this is what the back looks like. But this does show us that it prints very nice and clean bases, so it's very smooth, yeah, and it's almost perfect. Then I went ahead and printed these Highlander uh, keychains. So the red one is the CR10, and the blue one is the E10. E10, CR10. Speaking of which, they use 10 for a reason. Yeah, that's interesting. Okay, so yeah, you can see the difference here. Um, mainly, you're going to see a lot of stringing in these prints. You can see how clean the CR10 print is. And keep in mind this model isn't the best model to showcase, but it does show you some things when it comes to lettering. So CR10, it's very nice and clean, very consistent. But you can see there's a ton of stringing. It's a recurring problem. Seems like the uh, hot end or the box doesn't know what temperature it is at. It feels like it is actually inputting way more temperature than it should. I have it set at 195 degrees, and I pretty much copied my CR10 settings I put on the E10, and I've got good results, but there's a ton of stringing. And another thing I noticed is when I actually lays down the filament, when I try to grab it, it is actually very gooey. It is very flexible, and it is way more flexible than I've ever seen my filament be. On the Anet A8, as well as the CR10, never had a filament that gooey. And this one does it at 95 degrees, same settings for this one, and my Anet A8. So, it feels like that is one problem. So in my next video, I'm going to try and lower the temperatures by 10 degrees, and maybe another 20 degrees, and then see what happens. Uh, for the filament because it does feel like it is extruding way too hot and I went ahead and reprinted this low poly Pokemon right here And this is the CR10 and this is the E10 and I just switched the filament midway But you can see again. There's a lot of stringing, but the prints are actually very very consistent. They're actually very similar and Yeah, it's it does show that it can print pretty clean prints except for the stringing which I'll fix later But yeah, this is where my prints stand right now and any defects you see are from the model because you do see them on both models here are some of the remains of the same Pokemon that I printed out with the blue filament, and this was before my second calibration that I've done to the printer. So you can see that some of them failed, and midway, and whatnot. Then I actually went ahead and printed Benchy, and Benchy actually came out pretty well. And I was surprised how well it came out. It is a very nice and solid piece, and with my good roll filament, it did print a very nice and clean print, except for these right here. By no means I'm a pro in 3D printing, but I'm just showing you guys the results. So the text on the bottom, you can read it. It looks fairly clean. And uh, the only issue that I see, other than these lines right here when the header moves, is this drooping right here around the arch. And if we take a closer look, you can see all the string that is inside. And you can even see the uh, ship wheel, which is pretty cool. But yeah, some drooping around the arch. And that's about it for defects on this print. It did come out pretty well. Then I went ahead and printed out these two at the same time. Once again, the blue filament seems like it is a bad roll that I have. Other than some straying around the edges here, you can see that it is rough around, around this area. And here are the same parts side by side, the CR10, the E10. And you can see how there is some loose filament around this area and it is very, very rough. But otherwise, it is very smooth on the sides. And you can see there are some problems here at the top as well. Which brings us to the G-Create rockets that are printed out here multiple times. So I have printed them at 100% scale for both printers, I have shrunk it down on the E10, and I've also supersized it on the CR10. So what you see here on the 100% scale ones, which is the blue and the red one right here, are pretty much the maximum height that you can print on the E10. That is what it looks like compared to the CR10's maximum build height, which is massive, and you can just see how big it can get on the CR10 compared to the E10. So on the E10, you can expect that maximum size of a rocket, and with the CR10, I mean, it is beautiful, and it is very consistent, very clean prints. It is just an amazing printer to print with. And I've showed this off in my previous video for the CR10 in my final review. I've shown all these prints before, but you can just see how beautiful and clean this print is on the CR10. It is just awesome. And pretty much all these guys were printed at the exact same settings, except for this guy right here. All of them were printed at 0.2 layer height and with a wall thickness of 1.0. Except for the E10, I printed it, I think, at 1.8 wall thickness. And uh, this is what it came out, and it didn't come out too clean. And that is mainly because of the stringing and because of the blue filament. Because if you shine in the light, you can see there's a lot of inconsistencies, and it is kind of weird. But at the same time, the printer was extruding too hot, so that is why it probably shines too much and why there's a lot of stringing. 
but we'll find out in the next video. But with that said, it didn't come out that bad. It actually printed pretty well, it did print well. But with that said, there are some gaps right here in the print. So it's not all perfect. And after finding out and presuming that my blue filament is a bad roll, I went ahead and shrug it down much smaller and printed it with my good red Amaze 3D filament. And once again, we see a lot of stringing. Again, uh, we can just fix that out settings, hopefully. But with that said, the layering actually looks pretty consistent. Very similar to the 100% scale one from the CR10. And overall, it did turn out pretty good. I mean, of course, there's some defects right here, but that is because it's small. And if you're wondering about this thing right here, this was printed with the CR10 and it actually is a really beautiful model that I might print on the E10 as well. I mean, you can see all the detail and this is just a really, really clean print and model. I mean, if you look at it like that, even on my table, even in real life, even up close, you wouldn't think this was 3D printed, but it is and it's awesome. All right, so with all that being said, what do I think about the print quality so far? First of all, the stringing issue is probably very easy to fix. I either lower the temperature or check if the fan is actually doing its job in cooling the filament as it extrudes. Because once again, I notice when the filament lays down, it actually takes much longer to dry and become hard than the CR10 when it lays down its filament. And it's very gooey, it feels weird until it freezes and then it becomes really solid. So I think it's either the settings are wrong or the fan is not doing its job in cooling. Printing wise, it does its job. The quality is okay. It's uh, it's okay right now at this point. In some places, it's close to the CR10, but again, I have to tweak my settings and see if I can improve on that, which I'll be updating you guys in a proper full length video with many test prints and sharing my final settings for the printer. Other than that, I've actually encountered two more issues on top of my last video, which is the assembly issues and fixes video on the E10. And uh, those issues are noises. One of them was actually very easy to fix, and that was with the Z-axis motors. They were actually squeaking when they go up and down in certain areas. And uh, all I did to fix it was just simply put in some sewing machine oil. And here's what it sounded like. And the other issue that I had was actually a worse issue that is fixable by replacing a part and taking apart the control box. And that, my friends, is the control box slash power supply cooling fan. And it seems like the fan they have included for that box is defective. And sometimes when you turn it on, the fan isn't sitting in the right place and it would actually just spin and rattle and rattle until you turn it off, you hit the box, and then you turn it back on and then it gets a good spin. And once it does get a good spin, it's gonna stay quiet or relatively okay quiet. But sometimes when you turn it on, you will hear it just rallying like crazy and here's what it sounds like. And that is actually pretty much it for this video. So hopefully I can get this printer to print better print. Right now it's actually on sale for like 275, which is actually a better price point than the pre-sale. And I really hope that it stays around that price point. And in the current state it is, I really hope they keep the price down and keep it at that price point or maybe lower because of all the issues that are faced. Because otherwise if they charge any more and it's just a total, total ripoff. On top of the other stuff that has been discussed about it looking like a CR10 and they're trying to imitate it and all that controversial stuff. But yeah guys, that's actually pretty much it for this video. This was just a quick update video to show you guys where my printer stands right now with me. And uh, so far it's looking good. And I pretty much just need to tweak my settings and get better prints hopefully. And that's pretty much it. So thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you did, hit the like button and subscribe if you want to like this. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care everyone.